بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد um, We started yesterday uh, our discussion about the definition of توحيد الأسماء والصفات and we uh, have uh, discussed a little bit the definition of توحيد and we mentioned certain rules related to how we define things in the right way, that we have to define each word by itself, and we define the word Tawheed, Asma, Sifat, that's right? And uh, we, we talked a little bit about the difference between the technical definition and the linguistic definition, and how there is a relationship always between these two. And um, we went to the part where I left you with uh, about that these names mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. And remember, I asked you a question. I said, uh, do you think there is any great name, perfect names, quality, descriptions for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were mentioned other than the Quran and Sunnah? And or we can use them or it can be used and you all agree that it is not possible, that's right. But in the same times I have mentioned to you certain names and descriptions and qualities that we all agree that we can describe Allah with it. And it's not mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. Like we said, Allah invented this word. Made this word. You will not find this word sana'a. Uh, ex- ex- exist in uh, the Quran and Sunnah and so many other things like that and we know for example Imam Ahmad rahimahullah used to make dua and he would he's, he was heard saying ya uh, يعني, uh, that he is the one who يكشف الكرب the one who remove calamity يَا كَهْفَ السَّائِلِينَ كَهْفَ السَّائِلِينَ um, If you literally translate it to Arabic, uh, to English, it wouldn't make much sense. It wouldn't make sense at all. <laughs> okay. كَهْفَ السَّائِلِينَ The cave of those who uh, asking or begging you. Cave, you know what is, Arabic language, they use this as a form of metaphor. The cave is the place that you run to when it's raining. You want to hide to protect yourself. So that's why they use this as a form of metaphor in Arabic language. That Allah is that uh, thing that you run to when you need help, when you need protection. That's why they, they said in the dua, Ya kahf as-sa'ilin, or the, or the cave of those who are asking or in need. But you don't say that in English because it doesn't make sense. But this is not existing in Quran and Sunnah. So what we call these things, these descriptions, can we call them names of Allah? Can we call them sifat? So what we call them? What we call these things, these qualities and descriptions? Any idea? Anybody research that? We call them khabar. We call this Akhbar. This is Akhbar and this is Khabar. Khabar. Al Khabar, it is every perfect quality Allah can be described with but they were not mentioned in Quran and Sunnah كل صفة كمال لله لم ترد في الكتاب والسنة we don't take it as names we don't take it as صفات we call it أخبار عن الله that it's something you can tell about Allah it's something you can tell about Allah and the condition for these things that you can tell about Allah 
It must be what? It must be what? Perfect means. Perfect means. You cannot use or describe Allah with something which is not perfect. That's right. That's right. You cannot make it from your own. Taib. If it's not perfect, if it's not perfect. Like it's not necessarily, t- if it's not perfect, it could be good. It could be normal. It could be bad. So some people think because if it's not bad, if it's good, okay, I can say this is khabar. For example, if you say, Ta'ala Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh hi, and, and yani, way beyond this, but just, just an example. Somebody said, Allah has sense of humor. We said, no, you can't say that about Allah. Orchestrate. Maybe orchestrate is something organized, uh, but sense of humor. Or somebody said, Allah is funny. Like you see, this is so common. Or you said, he's the father. The father of humans. You, You can't say that. Allah did not describe him. He said, Father is a very good uh, meaning. But no, you can't say that as a name. Because it's not a perfect meaning. But you can say as a khabar. Akhbar, we don't treat it like the names and attributes or the sifat. We don't treat them. They all exist, but we should not, you, you, we should know that there is a difference between them and attribute. You can negate this akhbar, but you cannot negate a name. Okay, you know what? Allah, uh, I don't, Say that Allah made, Allah create, Allah khalaq. He did not khtara or sana. You see, I'm saying I can't deny this. I can no. I I have the right to say I don't accept this word. I accept only the word which is came in the Quran and Sunnah. The Quran in the Quran and Sunnah. Like the word move, movement. Can I say it, Allah moves? It's not in the Quran and Sunnah. But the meaning is because he comes, because he descend. Can I use this? There's a debate. We cannot describe Allah with it. We cannot say it's one of his actions. Because that's khabar. I've just been telling you. I'm trying to explain to you. But the general rules that Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah do not use this akhbar in a very common way. In a very common way. They always stuck with what is asma and sifat. Taib. Uh, so Allah's names and attributes or sifat mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. They are also, and to have Iman in their meanings and rulings. Meanings and rulings. Taib. Let's take from this definition one of the first rules or foundation that we can learn in related to al-asma or sifat or the first rule we learned that al asma al sifat the first qaida the first base the first pillar of tawhid al asma al sifat that asma Allah and his names and his attributes his sifat derived only from al quran and as sunnah that's rule we have to be very clear about the second one it has to be perfect perfect as one sister here said, I think she said the sister Bazila, free of imperfections. Jazakallah So it has to be perfect. The ulama said each and every quality, each and every quality, which is perfect, which is perfect, Allah, Allah, 
should be described with. He is prior to be described with more than anybody else. So every and each quality or description or name which is perfect, has a perfect meaning, Allah prior to be described with than anybody else. Okay, which one is much better? The one who can see or the one who cannot see? The blind or the one who sees? The one who sees. So that means that this quality, if it's a perfect thing for, for you, it must be prior, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be described with, min babi awla, because he's more suitable for it. And the opposite, anything considered as a disaffect, bad quality, that you will free yourself from, you should free Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it. Okay? That's a rule that Ahl sunnah have put. Taib. The one who talks better than the one who doesn't talk or not? The deaf, the one who can hear, or the one who can hear? Which one is better? The one who can talk and can hear. The one who talks and hears. Taib. So that's why we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a logical way to prove His names and qualities. Okay? It's a logical way. Because some of these qualities and attributes and names that can be proven by logic as well, beside the textual evidence. Beside the textual evidence. <clears throat> Question. The one who has son and daughters, better or the one who is incapable of having children? Hmm. I, I just have a very clear question. Answer my question. Huh? The one who has kids. The one who's single, just one second. The one who has kids, or the one who's bachelor, the one who has wife or husband, or the one who's single, bachelor. That's a debatable things. No doubt, the one who is married better than the one who's single. Okay. So isn't that could contradict the rule I just said? We said every quality, perfect quality in human beings, that he describe himself with it, or, or any bad quality that he free himself from it. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserve to be giving that perfect quality and to be free from that bad quality. We said the general rule. Anything perfect in, in you, consider as a perfect quality. Automatically, Allah has to be described with. I understand that, I understand that. But my, my question is, is that mean the rule that was made is wrong, is not perfect, is not 100% accurate? Yeah, that's true. MashaAllah. Where did you hear that from? You just thought about it. Yes. Marriage and pairing children is not a perfect quality. The one who sleeps or the one who has insomnia? No doubt, sleeping and eating and having a wife or a husband, having children... It is all because of need. You need to sleep to get rest. You need to get married or to, so you can have a company. You don't be lonely. You need support. You need children because to fulfill your weakness. That's why Fir'aun, Fir'aun, his weakness appeared when he saw the children. The Musa alayhi salam, because he cannot have children. So his weakness, this is a weakness spot in his heart. You see? So these things are not perfect quality. 
So das will not contradict our will not contradict our rules because it has be, to be perfect. But the one who has children, the one who doesn't have children, it's better then. But it doesn't mean it's perfect. So be careful. Okay? The rule is very... Uh, okay. Excellent. Type. So that's what it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names uh, can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned his names in Quran in three ways. Okay. Allah mentioned his names in Quran in three ways. The first one, by saying that he has names like this uh, pearl. Names. And I mentioned some of the verses yesterday, such as, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, هُوَ اللَّهُ الْخَالِقُ الْبَارِئُ الْمُصَوِّرُ لَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Surah Al-Hashr 24 أَيَّمْ مَا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Al-Isra has names, see, pearl. And sometimes he mentioned that he has a name, ism. He mentioned the word ism. And referring to himself, that he has ism, he has a name. Huh, who can give me an ayah that Allah said that he has ism? Or he referred to his name, himself as ism. Uh, to his name by saying ism. Hmm. Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read by the name. A single. Ism Rabbik. Somebody. Hmm. Wadkur isma Rabbika. In Surah Al Muzammil. Verse 8. And Sabbih isma Rabbika al A'la. Tabarak ismu Rabbika. Dil Jalali wal Ikram. Surah Al Rahman. Verse 8. Uh, 78. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَن تُيُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ Who's worse than the one who will prevent Allah's name to be mentioned in the masajid? See? So many verses. قَالَ ارْكَبُوا فِيهَا بسم الله مجراها ومرساها in Surah Hud verse 41 so, so many times Allah mentioned that he has a name طيب also the third way by mentioning the names themselves he mentioned his own names he doesn't use the word name anymore he gave the name, the actual names such as هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى in Surah Al-Hashr verse 22 to 24 and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Buruj 14 and 16 وهو الغفور الودود ذو العرش المجيد فعال لما يريد أنا أصل سورة الحديد هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن verse 3 طيب so many العلماء have classified the names of Allah سبحانه وتعالى to, diff, 
to so many different categories, to so many different categories. Everybody divide the, the, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on his own perspective. Some looked at what the meanings, he looked to the meanings of the names, then he started classifying. He said the names which is related to his might, the names related to his beauty, the name related to his uh, strength and power, then he bring all the names related to that. It shows his mercy, so all the names related to this. Being a loving God, okay? So they classify the names in a different way based on uh, different perspectives. But what I would like to say here to you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names came in the Qur'an in three different ways. Came in the Qur'an to three different ways. The way Allah mentioned His name in the Qur'an in three different ways. The actual names, okay? One, by mentioning the name by itself, like what you heard, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawmiddin. So these names, it's single, single name. Ar-Rahman, it's a single name. Ar-Rahim, another name, صح? You follow up? Khalif? Okay. Al- Al-Ghafoor, Al-Wadud, okay? Each name by itself. And another type of names, which will not come by itself, it will, there is the name, and attached to it, another name. So both will make one name. Such as, Al-Awwal Wal-Akhir. Al-Zahir Wal-Batin. Okay? Al-Qabid Al-Basit. Al-Khafid Al-Rafi'. It's basically the, the two names represent the two opposite meanings. And one of them by itself will not give perfect meaning. That's why we don't call Allah by only one of them. We put them together to make the perfect meaning. So for example, al khafid by itself. The one who put things down. Al-Akhir, the last. By itself, it doesn't make any much, doesn't give that perfect meaning. But when you say Al-Khafid al rafi the one who put things up and the one who put whomever he wants down. The one who raised whoever he wants and the one who put down whoever he wants. Al-Awwal, the one who's the first and the last, shows you that he is covering all of his creation. So, and he is capable, it shows his capability, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. So basically, al-mudhil al-mu'izz, the one who give power and strip that power. The one who put you up and high level, then he can put you down. So that's why the ulama said, as an Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah uh, said in his book, Bada'il Fawa'id and others, that this type of names, to summa al-mutaqabila, the names al-mutaqabila, which is basically two names represent the two, the two opposites. Taib. Also, yes, al-asma' al-mutaqabila. Then the third one, the third type of names, the ones which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have added His name to something. So the name will not come by itself, it will be added to something, but not the other, or not another name, no, it will be added to something. That thing could be one of His creation. So He will call Himself Rabbun Nas. The Lord of humans. Maliki Yawmiddin. The owner of Yawmiddin. 
طب can you say Allah is Malik and that's it? No, you said Malik يوم الدين. The way it came. Al Malik. I don't know. I don't remember any proof for that. Malik is not one of Allah's name. طيب. Malik, Malik. It means the king. Yeah, but the king, it came in another verses. Like Rabbu Nas, Rabbu Alameen. Yes. Malik, owner. Malik, the king. Rabbu Malik al Mulk. Rabbu al Falak. And so on. Yes, Malik al-Mulk. Jameel. Rabb al-Arsh. Can anybody search if Rabb came by itself? I don't remember now. Rabb. I don't think it ever came by itself. Somebody can research this? Anybody can research this? Online, on site. Can anybody do that? Okay. So here. Zakallah khair. Good. Type, just go over the word Rabb in one of these index for the Quran's words and look if there is it came by itself. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rafa Allah Anak. Type. Also, it can be added not to one of his creation, can be added, his name will be added to the word Zu. No, no, it's under the third category. It added to one of his creation or it can be added to the word Zu. Zu. You know Marfu' Majroor, Mansub? Huh? Fatha, Kasra, Dhamma. You know this? Huh? Type, in some, in some, Names or in some uh, words, we don't use fatha, dhamma, kasra. We, we use ya, wow, that's right. That's right. Do one of these things. Do when it is madhmuma, do. When there is kasra or fatha, what we say? The. Okay? So do and the, they are the same. Type. Who can give me an example of one of his names? He, this is his name. It's, it's Mudaf. Mudaf ila dhu. Added to dhu. For example, dhu al-arsh al-majid. This is the name. Dhu al-arsh al-majid. Taib. Also, dhu al-quwwat al-mateen. الرزاق ذو القوة المتين الودود ذو العرش المجيد غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول من سورة غافر ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام طيب This is how I, uh, I can, t- yani, I can tell you. This is the way the names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala were mentioned in the Quran in three categories: one by the name by itself, single name, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, or by having the n- two names together, like Murakkaba, uh, Mutaqabila. They are uh, the two opposites. They are come as one name, which is Al. الخافض الرافع الباسط القابض سون المعز المذل الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن or the name can come by uh, adding it to one of his creation like رب الناس رب العالمين مالك يوم الدين uh, or by adding it to the word ذو like ذو العرش المجيد and so on طيب 
Uh, some ulama classify even the names to 10 categories. Some of them said no. T- some names related to his tawheed. Some names related to his power, related to his uh, might and power. Uh, some of it uh, related to some of the names only to refute some of the allegations that raised by the pagans and the non-believers against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah refuted that by mentioning one of his names. And so on. Uh, yes. No, it's a single. Al Ghafur by itself or Rahim by itself. No, Mutaqabil, two opposites. Yes. And one by itself will not give a perfect meaning. But Al Ghafur by itself give you a perfect meaning. So don't forget these two things. Taib. Uh, let's go to As Sifat. Where well, sifat mentioned in the Quran and how they were mentioned. Uh, Allah's sifat, Allah's sifat were mentioned in the Qur'an in so many verses. Allah's sifat, attributes, and quality were mentioned were mentioned in so many different verses. So many different verses mentioning Allah's sifat. Sometimes this sifat comes in a, in a form like a verb. Fi'l. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن Allah is pleased with them. So رضي it's a fi'l, it's a verb. علم أن لن تحصوه فتاب عليكم He knew, past. He knew that you will not be able to uh, uh, He knew that you will not be able to perform the salat al-layl all the time while you are traveling and while you are resident related to Surah Al-Muzzammil, verse 20. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said also Surah Al-Muzzammil, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَعْلَمُ Allah knows that you stand up in the night, third of the night praying. Okay, or even more. طيب, هَلْ يَنْبُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهِ Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 210. Are they waiting for Allah to come to them? See? So all these verbs describing Allah's sifat. That's right. What is the sifat we just mentioned? Ilm, knowledge that he knows. He knew. He heard. So hearing the sifa been mentioned by using the verb. Okay? And another time... Allah will mention the attribute itself, the description itself as a noun. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ He is knowledgeable of everything. So knowledgeable, knowledgeable, referring to his attribute, which is the knowledge. Okay? سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ غَفُورٌ شكور. So many. طيب. And also sometimes the, the attribute, the sifa itself, like al-izzah, the dignity. Allah said, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةِ Allah has the dignity and power. Izzah means power, dignity, capability. And al-mulk, what's al-mulk? The ownership, the ownership. He owns everything, it means. Al-mulk, al-khalq. Creating, Allah creating. له الخلق والأمر. طيب. Why I'm saying this? This part is everybody agree upon. But the word الصفات, the word الصفات. One scholar has a problem with it, which is Ibn Hazm. 
rahimahullah. He always comes with some weird thing. And this is one of the weird things that he came up with. He said using the word as-sifat is innovation. Bid'ah. And he said tawheed al-asma sifat is absolutely out of line. Wrong. There is no such things called as-sifat. And because he is jahmi in his belief, but that support that uh, made him excited about this idea a little bit more. But he argued that the word as-sifat never been mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. He said the word asma, ism and asma were mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. But the word sifat never been mentioned. He being, he being literally, you know, he wanted to find the word sifat, the safat, say the word sifat. He want to see it in the Quran and Sunnah. Like we find in the Quran and Sunnah, ism, asma. He want to see sifa or sifat. He said, you saying that we only take from Quran and Sunnah, the whole chapter, the whole idea that you are talking about, the word sifat, it's something you invented. It's not been mentioned by Quran and Sunnah, it's not exist in the uh, uh, text, it's not exist in the, the talk of a salaf, the sahaba or the tabi'in. So it's the whole thing, innovation, the whole chapter of Tawheed should be cancelled. The way you study it. And this idea, he wrote about it, he defended in his, uh, in several of his books, like Al-Fisal, Fil-Mila uh, Al-Nihal, and others. And no doubt, uh, what he said is totally wrong. It's totally wrong. And it's not, it's, it's, it's a surprise to come from a great scholar, or a smart scholar, like Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, Ta'ala, like Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, Ta'ala. And to answer him, we have two ways to answer him, two ways of refuting his doubt. The first one, we call it Jawab Iftiradi. Jawab Iftiradi, it means, okay, you know what, I will agree with you that the word Sifa or Sifat never been mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. But just because the word Sifa or Sifat will not exist in Quran and Sunnah, it means we cannot use it. It means we cannot describe Allah with it. That's called Khabar. Just study that. طيب, the word Mawjood, Mawjood or Wujood, what that means in English? Exist, present, existence. Okay? This word never exists in Quran and Sunnah. Yani Allah never said that He is Mawjood. His presence or his exist. That literally this word. But this meaning understood clearly by hundreds of thousands, thousands of verses. That's right. It's very obvious. You following me? Do, can anybody say Allah is not exist because he never used the word exist or present? Can anybody claim that? Only atheists. That's right. And it's out, it's nonsense because Allah talking about Himself and talking about Him listening and hearing and being so, uh, there when this happened and Allah supporting and telling Musa, go, I'm with you. So you don't need to look for the word mawjood or wujood or present or exist literally to prove it. Because it's obvious, understood. Was there another word used? No need for using it. Okay, have I ever said that I'm a teacher? Is that something obvious? You see what I'm saying? You, we don't be literally looking for the words, otherwise we'll be close-minded. It's understood, it's a very obvious. You see what I'm saying? So, what I'm saying is that the word sifat, let's agree that it never came in the Quran and Sunnah. But the meaning of sifat is description. Ibn Hazm, do you doubt that Allah has description? 
Okay, Ibn Hazim, what do you call this knowledge, coming, being pleased? What do you call all these qualities? Sifat. Do we need to have the word sifat? It's not necessarily. So it's nonsense. It's not. It's nonsense. What he said. Two. The other way to refute him, to tell him, hold on, Ibn Hazm. Actually, it's not true that the word sifat were not been used in Quran and Sunnah, or in the textual evidence. Actually, the word sifah, literally, was used to refer to Allah. And this is in the hadith which is reported by Al-Imam Al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala in his book Sahih Al-Bukhari. In, uh, very, it's a very famous hadith reported by Aisha radiallahu, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anhu arba. That a man came to the Prophet sallallahu and he said, Ya Rasulullah, every time I pray, I read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Then he said, why you do that? He said, I love it, Ya Rasulullah. Or he'd been told about a man. He'd been told about a man. And that man, he used to read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ In every and each rak'ah, after he finishes, he would read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Then the Nabi said, why he doing this? He said, he love it because it is Sifatur Rahman. Because it is Sifatur Rahman. The word Sifa. Sifatur Rahman. Then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, told him that Allah loves him also. So the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi approved the word Sifa to be used uh, to refer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, قُلُوا اللَّهُ أَحَدْ is Sifa, description. So the word Sifa here, it exists, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approve it. So what's your problem, Ibn Hazm? Two. And even Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he said this hadith refute the opinion of those who refuse to the word Sifa to refer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's quality and attributes. As if he referring to Ibn Hazm. يعني reputing what Ibn Hazm said. And he said, and Ibn Hazm said that. And he came with a very weird, wrong opinion in this issue. طيب. Also, in another hadith, which is reported by Al-Bayhaqi and Ibn Adi, and Ibn Jarir, Ibn Abi Asim, and also Ibn Abi Hatim, and it's Hassan, that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu arda said that the Jews came to the Prophet وسلم, then they said, Ya Rasulullah, Sif lana rabbak. Again, describe to us your Lord, the one who sent you, الذي بعتك. Allah revealed, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Then one of them, then Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, فَقَالَ هَذِهِ uh, Sorry, the Prophet ﷺ said, هَذِهِ صِفَةُ رَبِّ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَتَقَدَّسَ عُلُوًّا كَبِيرًا This is صِفَةُ رَبِّ Again, he referred to the word صِفَة or he used the word صِفَة طيب This is a very clear evidence, that's right. There is also other evidence indicate the word sifa but it will not give a direct um, it will not be direct to the point it will, Allah will not use the word sifa directly referring to him but it will be understood and I, let me give you an example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said In so many verses, Allah mentioned what the kuffar describe Allah with. Then He said that He free from what they describe Him with. 
from what they have made sifa for him. Which technically meaning, if he free themselves, himself from what they describe him with it, that means, that means that he subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sifa and has descriptions other than what they said about him. That's why he said in Surah Al-Zukhruf, verse 82, Subhana Rabbi Samawati Wal Ardi Rabbi Larush Amma Yasifun. Allah glorify Himself, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the Lord of the throne, from what they describe Him with. Then Allah said in Surah Al Safat, Subhana Rabbi Ka Rabbi Lizati Amma Yasifun. Listen carefully. Allah is saying here, that he glorify himself, he free himself from what the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala was described with by those kuffar. Then immediately he said, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ Salam upon the messengers. Who have described Allah with what he deserved. So Allah free himself from what the kuffar describe him with. Then he praise the mursaleen, the messengers for what they describe Allah with. Then he said, Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah. Because he has already these qualities and more. So this verse indicates that Allah has sifa. Because he used the word yasifun. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have referred to, he used very similar to the word sifa, which is mathal. Mathal. Mathal, it means, huh? Like, no, uh, sifa. Mathal, it means sifa. In this, in these verses. Sifa, which is in Surah Al-Nahl, verse 60, Surah Al-Rum 27, Allah said, وَلَهُ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى يعني وَلَهُ الْوَصْفُ الْأَعْلَى Allah has the best description, the best sifa. Mathal here, it means sifa. Allah said, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ In Surah Al-Shura, verse 11, nothing similar to him, nothing in his sifa. Similar to his sifa. يعني ليس كوصفه شيء. ليس كوصفه شيء. Okay. Also, claiming that the Sahaba or the scholars or the early Muslim scholars never used this, it's another mistake that Ibn Hazm did. Another mistake. Uh, Aisha رضي الله عنها said about Surah قل هو الآحد صفة الرحمن. Ibn Abbas said صفة لا تنبغي إلا له. He referred to it as sifa. He used the word sifa. He used the word sifa. That's why it is common, it is common among the early Muslim scholars that they have chapter, it's called the chapter of Allah's sifat. Or as in Nasa'i said, nu'ut. Na'at, it's the similar, uh, same, the same meaning of sifa. Sifa and na'at is the same word. Have you heard the word na'at? Na'at. Na'at or sifa, it's exactly equal to each other. That's the way to write it. Na'at. And the pearl, Nu'ut. That's good enough. Now let's have a break for Salat al-Dhuhr.